Well, hi, everybody. If you're a DxO Pure Raw user like I am, you're probably wondering about the new DxO Pure Raw 3. Well, I've had a chance to play with it for about the last month on a beta trial version, and I'm happy to see that it was released yesterday. So let's spend a little bit of time and look at some of the new things that are really exciting in Pure Raw 3. Deep Prime XD, some new functionality inside of the interface on choice of levels of sharpening, and more. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so to take a look at DxO Pure Raw 3, I've done some work ahead of recording this video with a few images that hopefully will help demonstrate some of the different features. So I have uh, several raw files, or two raw files, and then each of them processed in different ways. So let's just take a look at this first one. Excellent information up there. In the top left, this is an ISO 3200 image out of my OM Systems OM1 unprocessed. Let's zoom in to 100%. And it's not bad even at ISO 3200, but you know, you can do better. So you can certainly see some noise pattern in the background, some noise pattern in the smoother areas of the beak, even some in the plumage, which isn't ideal, but it's, you know, it's not awful. So how would we go about processing this in Pure Raw 3? Well, it's just like it was in Pure Raw 2. A couple of ways you can do it. If I have this image, I could go up to the file menu, plug in extras, and process with Pure Raw 3. You'll note that I have Pure Raw 2 installed and it does not uninstall 2. You can have them both simultaneously. So if I were to click that, it takes that raw file and exports it out to Pure Raw 3 and you see the new interface. Things to note that are different. Um, the highlighted raw processing and denoising technique, Deep Prime XD. XD extra detail. We used to just have Deep Prime in the other two. So that's new. Um, lens softness. How much sharpening do you want to apply? And the defaults or the values are soft, standard, strong, and hard. More sharpening as you go down the list. So um, you can choose that. And you also have the option of the cropping. So you can image crop to the original ratio, maximum, or the complete image area. That will actually show you parts of the image you didn't even know was there. Um, I don't plan to use it myself because you just have to crop off the edges anyway. But it's there. You can also choose now to Im export it out as either a digital negative, a JPEG, or a TIFF. I always export out as a DNG so I can have a raw file to process from there, and it is a linear DNG. Destination, where do you want to put it? DxO folder as a subfolder of the original, or you can do a custom. That's always sort of been there. That's nothing new. File renaming, this is all also not new, but it turns out it's pretty handy, and I'll show you that in a, in a moment with a different option. So you can prefix it with the raw processing method and then put custom text or use a suffix. And then when you're done, what do you want to do with it? Export it to, don't do anything. You can export it to Lightroom, which is the, I'll call it the cloud-based version of Lightroom, classic, the one most of us use, or you can go straight to Photoshop. And export with original raw, that would only be if you didn't have the raw file already in your Lightroom catalog. So I'm not actually going to process this because it's just kind of boring to sit there and watch it because I've already done so. But that's the interface. So let me cancel that. Let's go back to grid view. And what I've got here is a series of images that I pro processed. This one is just deep prime with the standard default sharpening. And then I have one that's Deep Prime XD, standard processing, Deep Prime XD with the hard level of sharpening, the strong level of sharpening, 
in the original raw file. So let's just do some simple comparisons. I'll go back to grid. Let's grab the raw file and just compare it against deep prime with standard. Get rid of some of those, just so we have a little more screen real estate. Zoom in. And you can see a nice improvement in the background detail levels and lack of noise. And even much better detail in the head. Um, some noticeable in the plumage, not as much, but certainly an improvement. And yes, I know this guy's eye is half covered by the nictating membrane, but it was a good image to use as a demo. So there's just kind of what we had. This one on the right, even though it's coming out of Pure Raw 3, really looks identical to what came out of Pure Raw 2. I've done those tests. I can't tell a difference, so I chose not to show them here. So now let's compare standard against Deep Prime XD with standard. So on the left we have Deep Prime, Deep Prime XD, extra detail. Um, I, I think you can probably see some difference, and this is at 100%, but you may have to zoom in to actually be able to tell. But it depends on the image, but it definitely shows more, particularly on this image. If you look about here, you can see a bit more detail than there was in the prior Deep Prime version. Still both excellent. Um, noise reduction, I think maybe it's slightly improved here, but again, not terribly noticeable. But it was always, it was already great, so it's not like it needs much. So now let's compare Deep Prime against Strong. That's the next level up, so I'll compare these two. So, um, whoops, did I grab the wrong one? Yeah, I think I did, sorry. I've got XD, I want this one, and this one. Yeah, there we go. Now I've got the strong one on the right side, straight standard on the left side. Now you can begin to see the additional sharpening that is beginning to apply, particularly if you just look in here on the images, you can see it more. So it is, it is better, and it's going to depend on your image which sharpening level is appropriate which might mean you want to run the same image through multiple times. And there's a way to do that without having to run it individually two or three different times, and I'll show you that. So there's regular against strong. Now let's compare regular against hard, hard being the, the top level of sharpening, the most aggressive sharpening. And it got to be careful because it can actually start to get a little bit crunchy. On this image, I think it's actually okay. Um, you can certainly see more sharpening. So let's go back and compare hard and strong. So strong on the right, hard on the left. Yeah, you can see that the, the image with the hard level of sharpening has a bit more sharpening applied. So again, it might depend on your needs, and it's a per image basis. But the great thing is you now have that flexibility to choose. So there's one example. Um, here's another example. Here's the original RAW file straight out of the camera. ISO 3200 again. And the, the noise background, it's there, just not as visible, particularly up here in the snowy white area, more visible down here. This is actually an out-of-focus river back there. But you can certainly see noise in the head, the beak, the, the talons, it's just, you know, it, it's not, it's not ideal. But at ISO 3200, I had to go that far because I needed, I needed the shutter speed. I was shooting at a two thousandth of a second. I, I wanted that fast to shutter speed. So this time, let's just skip all the, the simple comparisons and I'll just compare that to the strong level of sharpening through Deep Prime XD. And we'll zoom in one. So on the right, strong on the right, as you can see from the name, straight original RAW file. Incredible improvement. And like, look even down at the talons, how much more detail we're seeing down there. It just looks really great. I'm really pleased with what it does. 
Um, processing speed with XD is certainly slower than Deep Prime. So use it when you need it. Don't use it when you don't need it. Uh, my sort of earlier experimentation has said I get up to 3200 on my system and I probably want to use XD. But less than that, I think Deep Prime does just as good a job or certainly negligible difference at a, probably twice the speed on my computer. So you have the choice. So there's what it looks like. Okay. So now let's talk about another way you could choose to run this, just to add a, a, a little bit more flexibility if necessary. So I'm going to take this raw file, this ORF file. I'm going to right click on it and say show in Finder. And there it is in my Finder window. Now I'm on a Mac. If you're on a Windows machine, this would be Windows File Explorer and it would show you the, the file where it lives. I have Pure Raw open over here, so I'm going to open it. There's just sort of the empty window. I can just take this file and drag it over here and drop it. Now I've got it in here. So why would you go about doing that? Well, I'm going to go down here, add to queue. This is also new. So I'm going to add it to a queue and it says, oh, well, what options do you want? Well, let's say I wanted for this case um, Deep Prime with standard level of sharpening. And I'm not going to change anything else, but I'm just going to add it to the queue. So there's a button down here, Show Queue. You see I have one image in the queue, and it's showing you what it's going to end up naming it. Hide the queue. Let's add the same image to the queue again. This time I want Deep Prime XD with Strong. And just so I know which one is which, I'll come down to Renaming. And this is where Custom Text comes in handy. Custom Text. And I'll put in, um, instead of what I had there from a previous one, I'll type in the word Strong so I can remember what it was. Now I have two images in the queue. Well, let's add it again. Say we wanted to compare strong and hard this time. So I'll set the level of sharpening to hard, come down to my renaming, type in my custom text, and instead of strong, this time hard, add that to the queue, look at the queue. I have the same image. I'm going to run it three different ways, and I only had to be in here once. Maybe that's handy for your workflow. Maybe you don't know whether strong or hard is going to be the right option, or XD or just regular Deep Prime is going to be the right option. You can queue as many of those up as you want to, and then you just click the play button, and it starts processing the images, processing one of three, two of three, three of three. So we'll pause the video and let it do its business here, and then we'll come back and show you what happens when the three are finished processing through the queue. Okay, so you saw the last image just finishing up, and now you have a choice of what to do. Your pictures have been processed and exported to Lightroom Classic. The reason I automatically did that was in the processing options, I had left it as export to Lightroom Classic. So that's why you have a choice down there to say don't do anything, process them in some other software. So if I click that and I pop back over to Lightroom, we're sitting in the import dialog box. Uh, these three are grayed out because I already have those three images, but if I had not already processed them, these would be available for import. And of course you want to just add them so it adds it to the catalog. So simple enough. That's kind of a a nice feature, so I'll cancel out of that. And one final way to use DxO Pure Raw 3 is to do it directly from Finder or Explorer. So to do that, I've got the same raw file selected, right click, show in Finder, Windows Machine, show in Explorer, shows the image there. If I now right click, instead of dragging it over into an open copy of DxO Pure Raw, I just right click here, and under Quick Actions, here's options that were there for Pure Raw 2, so that isn't new with Pure Raw 3, but there's more options. So if I wanted to just process it using XD and produce 
a JPEG, I just click that and away it goes, or any of the other combos that you want to select. So for this demo, let's just do a deep prime to JPEG. So as soon as I click that, it starts processing. It doesn't open up the interfaces, either the whole window for uh, pure raw or the, the options. It uses a set of defaults and it's going to save it to a DXO subfolder, because that's what I had chosen of the original folder. It's done, completed. If I go to the DXO subfolder, there's the JPEG. And if I just preview that very quickly. So for a quick and dirty conversion, not bad, right? That's straight raw file untouched through deep prime to a JPEG. Certainly good enough for social media kind of stuff. Um, s small things for anything bigger, you'd want to obviously do some work. So there, there are the options. So what do I think about Pure Raw version 3? I think it's great. I'm, I'm very impressed with Deep Prime XD. I think it does provide some extra detail. Um, it's nice to have the four levels of sharpening that you get to choose from. Choose the one that's most appropriate for your image. I think it's great. It's a $79 upgrade, whether you have version 2 or the original version. So you're still going to have to pay to upgrade. Um, I'm certainly going to upgrade. I've been using this, like I said in the intro, for about a month in a beta release. And now that the final product is out, I am certainly going to upgrade and use it. I'm, I'm a big fan of DxO Pure Raw. I think it's an excellent tool, does great work, never leaves artifacts. It just works exactly what I want.